Hi, my name is Chris from the Hypro Service Department. Today I'll be showing you how to maintain and troubleshoot a 2535S plunger pump. The tools required to work on the wet end of a 2535S include a 41 millimeter socket, a 21 millimeter socket, a 12 millimeter Allen, a 10 millimeter Allen, two straight screwdrivers, a rubber hammer, an M10 metric bolt, a pair of pliers, an inch and a half piece of PVC pipe, and anti-seize. Let's get started. If the pump is not reaching its maximum pressure, check that your inlet plumbing is correctly sized for the pump and that your screen is clear of any debris. A worn or clogged valve would also cause a decrease in pressure. Let's take a look. Remove the spring and use the M10 bolt to thread into the top of the valve. Use your pliers to pull out the valve assembly and you can thread the bolt all the way into the valve enough to pop it apart. And in here we'll look for any pitting or corrosion. Now that we've removed all of the valves and checked them for any obstructions, pitting, or corrosion, we'll remove the discharge manifold. You'll need to look at the packings if there is a water leak between the inlet manifold and discharge manifold. And to remove the discharge manifold, we will use an Allen wrench and a rubber hammer to take these out. Now that we've removed all of the bolts, we'll use a rubber hammer to remove the discharge manifold. After removing the discharge manifold, we'll want to remove the spacers by gently prying up on them with two screwdrivers in this bottom ridge and check the O-rings for any damage. Next, we'll remove the inlet manifold. Now that you've removed all of the bolts, take the springs out. and gradually work the inlet manifold off with the rubber hammer and gently pry with the two flathead screwdrivers. And be careful not to damage the seals inside. Here we can remove the low pressure seals and the V-packings. To remove the low pressure seals, gently pry them out with a screwdriver and examine them for wear. If the pump has been run dry, you'll notice that the ridges inside will be melted. Next, we'll remove the V-packings by tapping them out. Now we'll remove the spacers and 
flip the manifold over and examine the V-packings. Check the V-packings for any signs of wear or damage and melting that can be caused by running the pump dry. You'll notice that the inside of the packings will be overheated and also the packing retainer may be damaged. Next, let's remove the plungers. The stud may loosen up from the other side, that's okay. And what you're looking for are any deep scratches or pitting, basically anything that you can feel with your fingernail. And next, we can remove the wicks. And then from here, we can remove the oil seal retainers with the two screwdrivers. Tip the pump back so you'll have enough room to be able to pry the oil seal retainers out. Remove the oil pan. And now with our two screwdrivers, we can pop out the retainer. oil you want to replace the oil seals and to do that you want to gently pry it out with a screwdriver and then we'll press a new seal in. When installing the new oil seal you'll want to lubricate the outside and inside edges and put it in facing this way. Press it in. Now we're ready to start reassembling the pump. The first thing we'll do is put our oil seal cartridges back in and you'll want to lubricate the o-ring and the seal itself with oil or grease. And then line up these holes Push it straight in. You may, you may need to tap it down with a rubber hammer to get it fully seated. Okay. Next, we'll put our slinger rings back in with the tab facing down. Next, we'll reinstall the oil pan.